Three-dimensional chess, what is it? How do you play? This tutorial will show you all that you need to know about how to play 3D chess. It's recommended you know how to play 2D chess first, but if you don't, that's fine. This tutorial will cover you. So, let's get in to the full guide on learning how to play 3D chess. This version that we're using is the oldest and my favorite. It was invented in Germany. Raumschach is the German word for room chess or space chess. Space chess was invented in 1907, coming towards the beginning of World War I. Now, chess was originally made to be a battle strategy thousands of years ago. Well, in the early 20th century, things were changing quickly. Battles would soon be carried out not only on the ground, but by the air above and the sea below. Naturally, chess was to adapt to this, and here's what they invented. The standard space chess prism has five rows, five columns, and five pillars of spaces. At first, an 8x8x8 method was tried, but this left the prism feeling pretty empty. So, a 5x5x5 3D chess cube was set along. This gives you 125 spaces of freedom, nearly twice the 64 spaces of standard 2D chess. Let's go through and set it up. Here's how you set up the pieces. Black pieces go on the top two planes, white pieces go on the bottom two planes, and on the opposite side. First, let's put the kings in their place. White pieces are the same, just inversed. The black king goes center square on the top plane. Directly below the king goes the queen. Directly to the sides of the king are the knights. Directly to their sides are the rooks. On the queen's level, things are a bit trickier. See, the bishops need to be on two different colors of squares. So what we do is for black, we put the bishops on the second and fifth squares. So what goes on the first and fourth squares? Well, it turns out there's an entirely new piece. It's called the unicorn. The real unicorn looks like a knight with a horn on its head. I just use these quirks as place markers. We'll talk about the moves later on. Quick thing to note is that the white pawns have their bishops on the first and fourth squares and their unicorns on the second and fifth, so that the black and white pieces are parallel with each other. Lastly, we set up the pawns. The pawns go in front of the last two rows you've already set up. So you end up with 10 pawns for each player. Overall, there are almost twice as many spaces, but instead of 16 pieces for each player, you get 20. Two extra pawns and two unicorns. Now that we're done setting up, it's time to play. First off, the pawns. Black pawns move forward and down. White pawns move forward and up. So their moves are symmetrical. They attack diagonally, meaning two dimensions at once. So they can attack five different ways. Forward left, forward right, down left, or up left, down right, or up right, and down forward, or up forward. And if a black pawn moves all the way down and forward, or if a white pawn moves all the way up and forward, they can be traded in for another type of piece. Rooks move in straight lines, one-dimensionally. So they have six directions they can move. Forward, backward, left, right, up, and down. And they attack the same way as do the rest of the pieces. Bishops move diagonally or two-dimensionally. They have 12 different directions they can move. On their own plane, they can move forward left, forward right, back left, and back right. Going up, they can move up forward, up back, up left, and up right. Going down, they can move down forward, down back, down left, and down right. As in 2D chess, the bishop always stays on the same color. Here's where the unicorn enters. The rook moves one-dimensionally. It moves in one of the six directions at a time. The bishop moves two-dimensionally. It moves in two of the six directions at a time. The unicorn is the piece that truly moves in three dimensions. It moves three directions in one turn. It moves one in length, one in width, one in depth. You can think of it as moving vertically and then diagonally. They have eight different ways they can move. Going up, they can move up forward left, up forward right, up back left, and up back right. Going down, down forward left, down forward right, down back left, and down back right. And guess what? Since it needs to move three-dimensionally, it cannot move anywhere on its own plane. So that means you've got to really strategize with the unicorn. Don't underestimate the power of the unicorn. If you haven't played 2D chess, the knight might be a bit confusing as well. It moves two spaces in the first direction and one in the next. Or one in the first, two in the next. The easiest way to remember this is the L-shaped move it makes. The queen has all the moves except for that of the knight. 
So that means it can move one-dimensionally, straight lines like the rook, two-dimensionally, diagonally like the bishop, or three-dimensionally as the unicorn. It is by far the most powerful piece in the game. The king, on the other hand, has all the moves of the queen, but it can only move one space at a time. The goal in chess is to protect your king from the enemy and to checkmate your opponent's king. When the king is in a position in which it can be killed, that is called a check. You cannot make a move to enter check, and if you are put into check, you must find a way out of check. You can do this by moving the king, blocking the king with another one of your pieces, or killing the piece that threatens your king. There is no way out of check. This is called a checkmate. And this is the goal of the game. The first to checkmate their opponent's king wins. I find the easiest way to do this in 3D chess is to trap the king in one of the vertexes of the prism. Here you can see a simple checkmate with a queen checking the king and covering all the spaces surrounding it. And just in case the king attacks the queen, I've got a rook defending it. Since you can't move into check and the rook would do that, the king is checkmated. Of course, it probably won't be that simple. I'm Wesley Wilson. I make videos on politics, education, and video reviews. If you like what you see, subscribe for more. I'm blue, I'm blue, I'm blue.